Welcome to 719 FPV. I'm Nick Roberts and today is a very exciting day because I am finally graduating away from the Tiny Go Ready to Fly kit to my very first plug and play drone. The what is this? The Darwin FPV Baby Ape Pro. So this is my very first uh freestyle drone. Um, so if you followed my channel at all, you have known that I got into the hobby with the Tiny Go, and this is all I've flown so far. And I am so excited to finally upgrade to an official freestyle drone. But yeah, so this video we're going to go through all the initial setup of getting your very first plug and play drone including soldering up a receiver, which I am going to install the RadioMaster R81 receiver. And then we're gonna make sure everything is set up on our radio, all of our switches, and then get into beta flight, make sure everything's good to go there. And then we're gonna get, and then we're gonna get into the air and see how this thing flies compared to the Tiny Go. All right, let's head to the bench and get building. So looking at it, the VTX has its own set of screws, so we only need to unscrew the four outer Phillips screws. And then the top plate will come free along with the camera. Go ahead and just kind of pull off that antenna mount. It'll slide off and everything will just lay to the side and we'll have plenty of room. So with the Radio Master R81, we are gonna be working with the ground, five bolt, and S bus. So these three pads. And on the Baby Ape, we have S bus, five bolt, and ground. Those are the three pads we will be soldering to. All right, now time to prep the R81 receiver. So I'm going to tin the pads. First applying some flux. Starting with ground. And five volt. If I can get a better angle. And then S bus. Now to tin the wires, just to make soldering a little bit easier. Definitely not the best solder joints. They will work. They'll do for what we need. There we go, all three soldered up. Now, the other end of the wires. So let's go ahead and pre tin these. Same thing, just heat up the end of the wire, add a little bit of uh, solder, and it'll flow right into the wire. Now on to the baby ape, again with the flux. This first ground pad didn't actually have any solder on it, so I added a little bit. And let's start with ground. Hard to get a good angle. There we go. Then we have our five volts. And then right next to that will be our S bus, um, but my video cut out on me, so I didn't get that last shot. So here, everything is soldered up, and we are just adding on our heat shrink. That way we keep everything nice and safe, uh, keep all that dirt and grime out of there, as well as keep the antennas on. a spot for the receiver antennas on the VTX antenna mount. 
and slide that back on. And we are ready to go. Time to start our binding procedure. So I'm just going to go to model select and I'm going to select my tiny go model and I'm going to duplicate that. That way all of my switches and everything are already set up. So let's just select that model I just duplicated, hold down the model key, and we are going to change the name from Tiny Go to Baby Ape. Now this is completely optional, but I only have the two drones, so I might as well have two separate models. Now we're going to come down to our transmitter. So we are going to internal RF, multi, FR sky D, and D8. I hit bind, a little premature. Um, so this receiver, you have to hold down the bind button on the receiver and then connect power at the same time. When you do it correctly, the receiver will fast flash the red LED. Then go ahead and hit bind on the radio. And after a few seconds, there we go. We have connected and we have the solid red light. It is communicating with the radio. Now, we're going to power down both the radio and the baby ape and then reconnect it just to confirm that we have a successful bind. No light on the receiver yet. go we are connected we are bound up and that part is done so all of our switches and the radio are set up now we need to go into beta flight and make sure everything in beta flight is set up I have the receiver just kind of just sitting in there. I don't have it mounted anywhere. It's just kind of twisted up free. Um, but I don't believe it'll go anywhere. It's in there pretty good. And finally, making sure all of the hardware are tightened up. Very important on your very first uh, drone. So here we are in beta flight. Uh, we connected and it looks like the gyro is working correctly. So we will go to, starting with the first tab, we'll go to our ports tab. Here we are making sure our UART port is set up with our receiver, which it is. Next we have our configuration tab. Um, so we're just going to look over everything, make sure we have everything set up. Um, our arm angle is already at 180, so that's perfect. We'll leave that there. Right here we have D-Shot Beacon. Um, I do want to enable this for Lost and also for Set. Um, this way my motors will beep whenever... Well, yeah, well, my motors will be. Let's go ahead and save and reboot. Now we are in the receiver tab. Here I'm checking all of my sticks, making sure they match up with the correct sticks, do the correct either roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle, which they are already set up perfectly. I'm happy with that. That looks good. Alright, now go ahead and check out my switches. 
Looks like everything is set up. Yep, here's my fourth one. My aux four, aux three, aux two, and aux one. Looks like everything is set up. We are good to go in our receiver tab. Next we will go down to modes. This is where we will set up what we want for each switch. So all of our aux channels will be set up here. So my arm switch is already good to go. We are working on angle which will be aux 2 in the middle position. All the way down will just be regular air mode. Angle will be the middle position. And then the all the way up position will be our flip over and crash, our turtle mode. So that will be our aux 2 switch. Next, let's see what we can find. Yes, the beeper. Our beeper is going to be our aux 3, which is our momentary switch. And that is all four switches. Well, that is aux 1, aux 2, and aux 3. Alright, we are good to go there. Make sure you always click save when you're done. Next is our adjustments. This is where I'm going to set up my aux 4 to be my rate profile switch where I can switch between rate excuse me, rate profile 1, 2 and 3. So I'll just set both of these to aux 4. I'll span the full channel so I can get three positions. And let's go down to rate profile selection save and that should be good to go so let's go ahead and let's see what am I looking for oh yeah the pin tuning tab um, so right here I'm going to check to see if that aux 4 switch is working and it is we're rotating through rate profile one, two, and three. Um, but since we're here, we will go ahead and adjust my rates. I like to use actual rates, so I will go ahead and change it. And I will just input the same rates I'm using that I was using on the tiny go. I'll just put them in here. originally got these rates from a Joshua Bardwell video, so shout out to him. Um, he is definitely the go-to guy to watch for all of your quadcopter info. But anyway, right here I am copying my rate profile. I just copied rate profile 1 to, two, to my rate profile 2 and my rate profile 3. That way all three profiles are exactly the same. Now I will go ahead and change my throttle limit because that is what I have my rate profiles. Um, that's the difference between my rate profiles is it's a throttle limit. So we'll set that to scale. Rate profile 2 will be a 75% throttle limit. Now, rate profile 3 will be also set to scale. This will go down to 50%. Now, I don't know how this will, how the baby ape will behave with these throttle limits. Um, this is just what I had for the tiny go. And I'm just going to keep everything exactly the same. And I will change it if I need to in the future. So let's go ahead and just test everything, make sure everything is working and it appears to be good. Click 
save. Now we are going down to our motors tab we'll, where we will note motor direction. Uh, and I'm running D shot 600, that seems good. And that's good. Here we have the OSD. So this I definitely have to set up. I like to have my VTX channel so I can easily see what channel I'm on as well as my output power. Then I like to have my milliamps hours used as well as my battery voltage. Fly mode. It's always useful to have. My RSSI DBM value. Once I figure that out, that'll be very useful. And then I like to have my rate profile because I switch between the three. Finally, I have my fly timer. Now that looks perfect. That's how I like my OSD. So click save. Let's see, so we are on fat chart channel one with a 200 output power. That looks good. Don't think I need to change anything there. LED strip. Don't know what I'm looking at, but looks great. Sensors. All good and good. Does not have a black box logger. What do you expect for a $80 drone? And beta flight is all done. The Darwin FPV Baby Ape Pro is ready to go. Uh, the Radio Master R81 receiver soldered up. Uh, wasn't too bad. This, the pads were very small, but it went pretty smoothly. Um, and everything is set up in beta flight. Most everything was already good to go. There's just a few changes, but we are ready for our first flight. And I am so excited to try this guy out with the three inch props. Let's go fly. <laughs>